Okay, here we are at Camp Hero, and off in the distance is a contraption that looks a little bit like E.T. from here, but we happen to have an expert on what it is. That okay. Maybe you could introduce if yourself. You look, my name is Walt. Hi, I won't Walt. give you my last name. Okay, we don't need but, that. But uh, it's an FPS 35 radar wow. that was built by Sperry. Uh -huh. It was built during the Cold War era to detect Russian bombers coming into the United States. That's fantastic. That's a cinder block building wow. underneath it, totally wow. reinforced. Wow. The antenna is about the size of a football field. You're kidding, look at that. And uh, it it's was sort of dismantled when the, what do you call it? Cold War? Cold War sort of ended. And it's not operational anymore, it's, I guess. Uh, probably could be powered up. I, I suspect they just turned everything off and uh, shut it down. Wow. But there's another one exactly like this in Manassas, Virginia. You're kidding. There are sprinkled all around. Uh, there are different types of radar sprinkled all around the United States that were pretty much shut down after the Cold War. Wow. A lot of them were given over to FAA and are now used for air route traffic control. Isn't that something? So that must have caused a lot of the air raid drills when we were in elementary school. Might have. Possibly. Uh, if it saw some also, Russian uh, invaders. This one and there was another one made by uh, Westinghouse, which is in uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And when these things powered up initially, uh, the ones in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, wiped out all the communications uh, the tobacco company. Really? It actually zapped them all and burnt out all the uh, hardware. Fascinating. That's how much power came out of these antennas. That's a fascinating story. And, uh, initially when they were first turned on, all the birds around there fell out of the sky. Get out of here. They got a little heated. Really? And after a while they learned how to circle around behind the antenna and built their nests Are on the bottom. I'm kidding. That is, that's incredible. What a great story. And I know this because I worked for NORAD at the time, and I was in charge of about 21 of these radar sites. You're kidding. And how long well, did you work at NORAD? For how many years? For three years, back in the 60s. Wow, so that was the height of the Cold War. That was during a Cuban Missile Crisis. Is that right? Wow. Well, thank you for helping to win that war. That's a fantastic story. It wasn't a really war. <laughs> it was a no-show. <laughs> you won it anyway. All right, well, that's a great story. Thank you very much, Walt. We're going to just pan over here a little bit to the sea and then I'll get a little you know, picture this of... This was in charge of a lot. There was also a lot of uh, Nike missile batteries and Boeing missile, uh, Beaumark missiles that were tied in with this. Is that right? It was all a, uh, what do you call it, air defense. Wow, that's a great this story. This was part of the New York Air Defense Network. That's fascinating. Well, thank you very much, Walt. That's a great story. We'll put that up on YouTube and I'll send you the link. You too. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was too many years ago. That's that was, great history, though. You know, if you think about it, it was 50 years ago. That's a great story. Wow. Well, here we are. We're at the coast here on Camp Hero. This almost looks more like California than it does Long Island. It's quite a place. Beautiful seaside. Looking out. Oh, there were a couple sailboats out there before, but they're gone now. Let's see, I don't want to walk over the cliff here. Anyway, this is $8 if you come with your car. It's a right turn, right before Montauk State Park, and the lighthouse. It's free if you come with your bike. And I think we can see the lighthouse right off there in the distance. There it is. Whoops. <laughs>